Hello, I'm Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. In this episode we are going to look at the three separate cooling systems on the Chevrolet Bolt EV. But before we do so, there are two corrections I need to make to my previous video on the high voltage system components. I stated that the high voltage battery heater would not activate during DC fast charging in cold weather. Uh, I was wrong on that. Uh, it does activate, it draws around 2000 watts or 2 kilowatts of power as it is activated. And of course those 2 kilowatts of power are subtracted from the energy that actually goes to charge the battery. That heater stays on until about 65 degrees Fahrenheit, then it shuts off. The other thing that I need to uh, correct it's not really a correction, but I forgot one harness for the high voltage system. This harness has a different part number and is wired differently if you have DC fast charge or not. So let's take a look at what this harness is and where it goes, and then we'll get into the cooling system loops. So this is the DC fast charge charge receptacle from the Bolt EV. And I mentioned in the previous video there's a solenoid motor in here that will activate a lock so that when you have your cord, charge cord plugged in it will not let you unplug it until the high voltage DC is down to a safe level. Well in order to control this uh, solenoid motor there's a harness that needs to be connected. But this harness has two functions. The first function in the orange wiring is for the J1772, this round upper portion of the connector, to allow the AC voltage applied from your charger to connect to the onboard charger module here. There's an AC in connector right here that I never hooked anything to. So on this harness, the orange portion of the harness is going to plug in right there, and that's our AC in, then it gets converted to DC and goes out and charges the battery on the level one and level two charging. On this end of the harness, the orange harness, it of course plugs into the charge receptacle for the AC voltage when you plug that in, the level one and level two charging. Now both this fast charge receptacle and the non-fast charge receptacle have to have some way to connect the AC voltage to the onboard charger module over here and that's this orange harness. But if you have the fast charge receptacle here, then there's a black harness right here that has to come and plug in to allow for control of this solenoid lock here for the charge cord. So if you have DC fast charge, this black harness portion of this cable here is different than if you don't have the DC fast charge. So when I bought this DC fast charge receptacle, it did not come with this other harness. And I thought, oh, it's the same harness, we'll just plug it in. But then I got looking at the wiring diagrams and the, and the pins here, and I discovered that it's a different harness as well. So in my quest to convert our Bolt EV to a DC fast charge because it did not come with it, I've discovered so far that of course we'll need the different receptacle. You'll also need this harness that's different and then you'll need the, the underhood black low voltage harness that is also different that connects to our junction block which is also different there uh, underneath the hood. So. Okay, now let's look at the cooling system components for cooling the electronics and the motor. So all of these parts right here, the motor, the inverter, the onboard charger, the accessory power module, they are all cooled by one of the three cooling systems on this Bolt EV. Now to make things easier to understand, I'm going to remove all the high voltage wiring that I've already connected up so that that's not in our way of viewing the cooling system. So let me get that removed next. Okay, as you can see, I've removed all of the high voltage electrical connectors. I've also removed the air conditioning system compressor. This AC compressor is not used as part of this cooling system loop. However, it is used as part of the battery cooling system, which we'll look at next. But for this cooling system here, the official name of it is the hybrid 
slash electric vehicle electronics cooling system. And this cooling system is going to have coolant running through the single power inverter module, the accessory power module, the onboard charging module, and then the drive unit, and then out to the radiator through a coolant pump where the coolant temperature is monitored by an onboard computer. There's a cooling fan, variable speed cooling fan, and active grill shutters on the front of the vehicle, all part of this cooling system. So let's build it. Let's put all the hoses and pieces on here and take a look at it. All right, there are two interesting things about the coolant hoses on the bolt. One is they are labeled as to where they connect. So this is SPIM in, that's the single power inverter module, and this one has RAD for radiator. So that, that's nice. So you know which end of the hose goes where, and, and you'll see that, that that's a beneficial thing. Uh, since there's a lot of hoses on this on this vehicle. The other thing is these hose clamps right here They appear to be super glued to the hose just on the bottom here. So if I come in and Relieve the tension on that clamp right there. I cannot take it off of the hose It's attached back here and I've I have removed one of them and it, it's some sort of adhesive I don't know what it is so in a way that's nice because it holds the clamp in place but when you go to remove these and you think you're just going to undo the clamp and pull the clamp back it doesn't work that way you got to move remove the hose and the clamp together which means that when you put these back on you have to put the hose and the clamp on at the same time and you better use some coolant for lubrication in there on those dry hoses as you're trying to put that in Otherwise, you're not going to get it on. Let's start with this first hose that goes from the radiator to the single power inverter module to cool it. All right, I've just got a little cup of coolant right here I'm going to use for lubrication. This is the SPIM in. All of these parts are labeled with an O for out and an I for in, or they're actually labeled in and out like on the drive unit down below here. So this is the SPIM in. There's the I right there for the in. So coolant that has already been cooled in the radiator comes into this hose and goes into the single power inverter module where it cools the IGBT transistors and the diodes and the electronics in here and then goes out through this hose right here. So we have SPIM out, and then we have APM for accessory power module. That's our DC to DC converter up here. And that goes to the inlet of the accessory power module. And we'll bring that over to the accessory power module in. So next, coolant will go from our accessory power module to our onboard charging module. This also has an additional hose, as you can see right here, the small one here, that will go to the surge tank, the little radiator uh, surge tank on the driver's side underneath the hood. All right, so cool coolant from the radiator goes into the power inverter module that drives the motor down here. Then that coolant goes over to the accessory power module, our DC to DC converter. And then that coolant goes down to the onboard charging module. Now the single power inverter module is going to create heat when you drive the vehicle. Otherwise it's a minimal amount of heat. The accessory power module is the equivalent of an alternator on any other vehicle and so that's going to be creating heat all the time that your vehicle is powered up and your ready light is on. And then that sends coolant down to the onboard charger module which doesn't create heat at all unless you've plugged in your AC charge cord to the side of the car. This is not activated at all during DC charging so there's basically no heat created by the onboard charging module while driving uh, the vehicle. Then we're, we've got a hose that's going to come down to our drive unit off of our onboard charger module. Okay, so coolant leaves the onboard charging module, comes down to the drive unit. We're in the bottom of the drive unit, which we'll see in the next video when we disassemble this, 
is a big set of cooling fins that coolant runs through and right above that is the hot transmission fluid and it gets hot because it absorbs heat from this the stator assembly and the rotor uh, as you drive down the road now we just have one cooling fitting left right here leaving the electric motor the drive unit so let's see where that goes this is the surge tank you've got the little clip right here the the yellow clip that is where your hood latch latches in notice this has a 5 psi or 35 kilopascal radiate or surge tank cap on it so this coolant does not get real hot if 5 psi is all it's needed to keep the coolant from boiling uh, that's a fairly low temperature cooling system so connected to the surge tank is a long hose that goes down to the drive unit the output of the drive unit where the coolant will come up into the surge tank and then it will go down to an electric water pump here and go out to the radiator and complete the cycle so let's get this hooked up here okay we have all of the cooling hoses connected to everything except the radiator so let's just do a quick review and then I'll bring the radiator and the other parts over here and we'll take a look at those so the outlet from the radiator which is the inlet to the power inverter module is right here so coolant goes into the inverter module leaves the inverter module goes to the accessory power module our DC to DC converter where then it leaves and goes down to the onboard charging module where then it leaves and goes down to the drive unit that propels the vehicle then that coolant comes up to our surge tank where we can check the, fl the fluid level by the way this coolant needs to be changed every five years or 150,000 miles that is the service interval on this uh, coolant system on all three cooling systems all right then that coolant goes down to an electric water pump the outlet of this pump then connects to the inlet of the radiator okay here is the radiator itself you can see this this hose right here is the hose that would connect to our water pump outlet so that hose right there is going to connect right there and sit there and then on the other side the outlet of the radiator is right here and that would connect to our inverter module hose which I do not have clocked correctly it needs to be about right there so let me fix the orientation of this inverter module hose they do have alignment marks on them but this one had two and I wasn't sure which one it was but now the hose is up higher to match the radiator uh, outlet just like that all right while we are here looking at this radiator this radiator is only for this electronics loop that we're looking at and it has a temperature sensor built in right here that the hybrid powertrain control module number two under the passenger seat monitors and then controls a variable speed cooling fan uh, that would be uh, right here on the on the back side of the radiator that fan has two bolts one bolt right here and the other one up there and two clips one there and one there that allows it to just slide in place here's the cooling fan assembly it has a three wire connection right here I believe it's a variable speed yes it is sealed brushless it says a variable speed brushless cooling fan that would go on the back of this radiator as we're looking at it here all right the last piece of this cooling system are these active grill shutters there's a right hand side and a left hand side and they can be controlled individually by a, a, a motor pack that's underneath this cover right here there is an electrical connector underneath the, the active grills where this grill motor module will communicate over the LIN bus to the hybrid powertrain control module 
The purpose of the active grill shutters is to improve aerodynamics when extra cooling is not needed. So these will close. These apparently only have two positions, open or close. There's no in between from what I've read. I could be wrong there, but uh, from what I can see, they're e either open or closed. The service information uh, description of this system says that you may have to drive the vehicle for as much as 13 minutes above 25 miles an hour before they'll even begin to move. It also tells us that in cold ambient temperatures these shutters will remain closed. Now these active shutters are positioned about midway down your bumper behind the darker grill area and they will either allow air to go through this radiator or not. Okay so this wraps up one of three cooling system loops on the Bolt EV. This one, once again, is just for the power electronics and the drive unit. Now, we the next cooling system that we'll look at is for the battery. The rechargeable energy storage system, it's called, uh, has its own cooling system and heating system that is totally separate from this. It has nothing to do with this radiator or this uh, all of this plumbing that we just put together at all. So let's take a look now at the second cooling system the one for the rechargeable energy storage system or the battery as we refer to it. Okay, our second cooling system is called the hybrid electric vehicle battery pack cooling system. It also heats the coolant that goes through this battery. I have separate videos on the complete disassembly and reassembly of this battery and you can see the cooling plates down underneath these five battery packs in those videos. But on here on the front of the battery we have a coolant inlet and we have a coolant outlet. And that coolant needs to be heated when the battery is too cold and it needs to be cooled when the battery is too warm so that we can keep the battery in the optimum temperature range for maximum efficiency. So let's take a look at the components of this battery pack cooling and heating system. Okay, the cooling system for the battery pack here begins with the air conditioning system compressor. And so we have our high voltage DC inlet. We have our own built-in inverter that drives a three-phase variable speed electric motor inside the compressor here to drive the compressor. The inlet is going to bring in the low pressure vapor from the battery chiller and from the evaporator inside of the passenger compartment. The outlet is going to push out pressurized high pressure vapor that goes to the condenser in front of the radiator. And we'll take a look at that condenser here in a few minutes. So for now, let's get these air conditioning hoses connected. Okay, this first set of air conditioning hoses has a connection to the condenser in the front of the radiator, and then it has a connection to the battery chiller to cool the coolant that goes through the battery. So let's get these connected first. Okay, next we will connect the battery chiller so this is the battery chiller and basically it's a mini evaporator. Now everybody with an air conditioning system in their car has an evaporator anyway and just like the evaporator that cools the air in your passenger compartment, this evaporator is going to cool the coolant that goes through the battery itself. So if this coolant is too hot, heat will be removed from the coolant through this evaporator. So the air conditioning compressor sends high pressure vapor out to the condenser where it condenses into a high pressure liquid where then it comes to this thermostatic expansion valve where it creates a restriction changes into a low pressure liquid where heat is added to it or it absorbs heat evaporates and high or low pressure vapor then goes out of the larger uh, outlet pipe here. That low pressure vapor has absorbed the heat from the coolant and then that goes back out to the compressor uh, where it's compressed and ran back to the condenser where it's condensed into a liquid, loses its heat and the heat from the battery is transferred to the condenser and then radiated out into the air. So mini evaporator here where we have a high side high pressure liquid coming in and a low side, low pressure vapor going out that has absorbed the heat from the battery coolant. So let's connect this up next. By the way, this has one hose that connects to the surge tank 
for the battery which is on the passenger side under the hood and then it has a very long hose right here that goes all the way to the high voltage battery itself so we'll just dangle this hose over the back of the the bench for the moment to connect to the battery all right the next pipes here are the ones that go from the chiller to the evaporator inside the passenger compartment and it's just like this other evaporator i described except it's much much larger i also want you to see for those of you who are familiar with air conditioning systems this is the pipe within pipe system where the returning low pressure vapor that might still have some liquid in it going back to the compressor where it's ran through the high side high temperature high pressure pipe to heat it up and evaporate it even more if there was any liquid left so that no liquid gets back to the air conditioning system compressor because you can't compress a liquid you'll break the ac compressor so it's a it's a very unique very cool design this pipe within a pipe uh, system and that's been going on for several years uh, this is the first time i've actually had one out of the vehicle to where i could show anyone but it's a it's a neat system so we have our high side pressure port right here where you can hook gauges up and our low side pressure port right here this sits right on top of the battery chiller and then the two lines from the air conditioning compressor come in right here A lot of pieces coming together here there's still more for this battery cooling system okay next we're going to bring in our electric water pump the surge tank and the rest of the coolant hoses we have a refrigerant system that cools the coolant going through the chiller coming back from the battery and then we also have antifreeze the gm dex cool 50 50 mix of antifreeze and deionized water going through cooling hoses uh, with a surge tank and a water pump so let's bring those in next okay so here's the surge tank for the passenger side of the vehicle under the hood with its electric water pump right here and then the hose that goes back to our battery coolant heater before it goes into the battery itself so let's connect this up next okay i've now connected the inlet to the chiller to the surge tank coolant will then go down through the surge tank into the pump where it's pumped over to our 2000 watt battery coolant heater the battery coolant heater has an outlet that goes to the inlet of the battery and then it has an inlet right here from the water pump itself the condenser has a connection right here the upper hose from the air conditioning compressor outlet is high temperature high pressure vapor that then goes into the condenser condenses into a high pressure a little bit lower temperature liquid that then is fed to our chiller so let's look at the evaporator next this is the evaporator assembly it has built into it a receiver dryer assembly that to my surprise is serviceable there's a plug in the bottom of this that you can take out it has a seal that needs to be replaced and then the the desiccant bag the dryer portion that's in here can be replaced without having to replace the entire condenser assembly on the other side of the condenser we have the fittings there the connection fittings to the two pipes from the air conditioning compressor so this would sit right here with the two pipes connecting right there just as we talked about and then of course this is in front of the radiator for the first cooling system that we looked at for the power electronics on this vehicle and then the cooling system fan is behind that so the battery does not have a radiator instead it uses the air conditioning system condenser to radiate heat out into the out into the air so i'm going to move this condenser out of the way so we can look at the rest of the components and review overall system operation so the job of the air conditioning system compressor in relation to the battery is to cool the coolant 
that goes through the battery. So the coolant that goes through the battery has its own surge tank under the right hand side of the uh, hood, the passenger side of the hood when you open it up. That coolant has a pipe that goes down to an electric water pump that then feeds it over to in back of the uh, drive unit underneath the uh, vehicle the battery heater, the battery coolant heater. And that goes to the inlet of the high voltage battery. And then goes through the battery, all its cooling plates and everything, and comes back in on this other pipe right here where it comes into the battery chiller. And if the coolant is too hot, then the heat transfer into the refrigerant of the heat from the coolant goes into the refrigerant, then goes back up on the suction side of our air conditioning compressor and repeats the cycle and transfers that heat to the condenser out into the air. So we cool the battery by removing the heat from the coolant that goes through the battery and transferring that into the air conditioning system and radiating it out into the, the air as you drive and operate the vehicle. So two separate systems here involved in cooling the battery. And then we have, of course, our battery heater back here, the 2000 watt battery heater that does come on for both AC and DC quick charge. I know we stop heating the battery around 18.3 degrees Celsius or around 65 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, but I don't know at what temperature we start cooling the battery. I do know that when the battery is being charged with your plug-in charger, that the air conditioning compressor through the chiller and the, the water pump is operating to keep the battery cool because of course the battery heats up while you are charging. Uh, and unlike the Nissan Leaf that tells you in the owner's manual not to charge the battery uh, while it's hot, you do not have to do that with the Chevrolet Bolt EV and any other liquid cooled battery uh, because the air conditioning system compressor will cool the battery while you charge it. All right, just a couple more things and then we're finished with this coolant loop. This air conditioning system, as I mentioned in the in the video on the high voltage system components, uses a special refrigerant, the R1234YF refrigerant, a very expensive refrigerant. That refrigerant requires on this vehicle a special POE oil. Um, when I took these parts off, these air conditioning system pipes and hoses off, I lost oil out of these and so there is an oil compensation uh, procedure you have to go through to add a certain amount of oil depending on what parts have been removed or replaced. Uh, the oil comes in a foil bag here and it tells us to prevent moisture contamination the oil must be used within two hours of removing from this sealed foil bag. So the oil is hygroscopic and will absorb moisture uh, out of the air. So uh, keep that in mind if you ever do any service work. Uh, then it calls for POE oil. Okay, so this is the second cooling system, which is really kind of two systems in one on the Bolt EV. The third system is for the coolant that goes through the heater core to control the passenger compartment air temperature. Now I've received a lot of comments from uh, viewers of my other videos wondering why they even had a coolant heater for the heater core and wondering why we couldn't just use the heat off the battery or the power electronics uh, as the heat for the passenger compartment. And at first I wondered myself and then suddenly I realized, well, if you want to be able to control the temperature in the passenger compartment, uh, this gives you the best option because you can turn the heat way up or way down by turning the heat up by increasing the temperature of the coolant in the heater core you will warm up the passenger compartment uh, very quickly without warming up the battery if this was a shared system uh, we would not want the passenger compartment coolant temperature to be affecting the battery coolant temperature and i realize there's switching and mixing valves that can be involved there. But um, I think on this system here, that's probably why, although I don't know, 
they have a separate coolant heater for the, the uh, heater core. So let's go take a quick look at the third coolant system on the Bolt EV, the heater coolant heater. Okay, so under the hood here, we have our last cooling system loop. We have a surge tank with a hose that goes down to an electric water pump that then pumps coolant into our cabin heater coolant module, where then the hose goes over and under. And you can see those two hoses right there. We've got the inlet to the heater core right there and the outlet right there coming back to the surge tank while we are here you can see right back there is the thermostatic expansion valve for the evaporator for the air conditioning system inside the vehicle all right so this is a real simple cooling system loop just a surge tank a water pump the heater the hoses and the heater core inside the passenger compartment Okay, well this has been a review of the three different cooling systems on the Chevrolet Bolt EV. Uh, it's very interesting to see the, the different cooling systems on different hybrid and electric vehicles. Now finally, next up, I'm going to disassemble the drive unit, electric motor, and gear reducer. So that'll be our next video. Thank you for watching.